Hi, I'm Borna, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video we're going to be talking about energy versus dihedral angle diagram and Newman projections. Um, a lot of my students have been having trouble with this, so I just decided to make a YouTube video about it, and if you watch this video thoroughly, I think um, there shouldn't be any molecule for which you wouldn't be able to draw an energy versus dihedral angle diagram. Let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, the um, energy versus dihedral angle diagrams and drawing Newman projections and basically assigning um, energy levels to them, qualitative energy levels to them, and drawing an energy versus dihedral angle diagram. Um, this could look a little intimidating at the beginning, but I uh, hope that after doing this problem um, that is going to make a whole lot more sense for you. Um, and uh, with that being said, let's get started. So this is the molecule that we are asked to draw the energy versus dihedral angle diagram for. So what we're going to do is that we're going to look across the bond that we're asked to draw the energy versus dihedral angle diagram for, which is the bond showed, shown with an arrow. And arbitrarily, we're going to pick one of the ends of that bond. And we're going to imagine looking at it from that perspective and reproduce that very structure in the form of a Newman projection and basically take things from there. Now, if I look at that molecule from that perspective, in the front carbon, I'm gonna see a substituent going down, one going right, one going left, and then on the back carbon, I'm gonna see one substituent going up and then one left, one right. Now, let me try to color code these so it hopefully makes more sense. The thing that is going down in the front carbon is like on the plane of the page, it's gonna be right here. And then I'm gonna see one substituent going to the right, so my hydrogen, that is gonna go right here. And then one substituent going to the left, which is gonna be right here. And then in the back carbon, I'm gonna see one substituent between my purple and red that is going to go right here and then one going to the right one going to the left in which case uh, which in this case are going to be both hydrogens so that is not going to really matter but um, anyway so if i fill in the substituents on the front carbon i'm going to have a methyl going down a ch3 going down i'm going to have a methyl going to the left a hydrogen to the right and then in the back carbon between my methyl and hydrogen I'm gonna have another methyl and then to the right and to the left I'm gonna have hydrogens now I'm gonna assign zero degrees to this zero degrees doesn't really mean anything it's just a reference point that um, we are um, uh, basically assigning that's kind of arbitrary I'm gonna assign that to be my like beginning point and then I'm gonna keep one of the carbons. I'm just gonna arbitrarily decide to keep the like front carbon in place and then rotate the back carbon in either direction. I'm gonna go clockwise. And that is gonna lead to three eclipsed and three staggered conformations in total, um, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. So let me just draw six circles in total. Okay, this is good. And then I decided to keep the front carbon in place, so I'm not going to um, change that up. I'm going to keep that in place. The front carbon is not moved. It's not subject to any kind of change. Just draw that as is. And then the back carbon is going to be moving in a clockwise direction. Alright, let's begin. So if I rotated the back carbon 60 degrees, I arrive at my 60 degree dihedral angle. And then there is gonna be a methyl here, there is gonna be a hydrogen here, and there is gonna be a hydrogen here. This is gonna be an eclipse conformation. Now, staggered conformations are the ones in which uh, substituents as far apart from one another as possible. Uh, one substituent on the back carbon is between is appearing between the two substituents in the front carbon. Now, between every eclipsed and um, staggered conformation, there is going to be countless conformations with like countless dihedral angle values: 49.997, 46, 23, whatever. Um, but in order to construct a diagram, we need to draw 
um, the maxima and the minima and try to assign um, qualitative energy values to them to the best of our ability and try to like basically um, depict that. Now if I go another 60 degrees, I arrive at 120, there is going to be a hydrogen here, a methyl here, and a hydrogen here. And then if I go one another 60 degrees, I arrive at 180, so that is going to be a methyl here, there is going to be a hydrogen here, there is going to be a hydrogen here. If I go another 60 degrees, methyl there, hydrogen there, and hydrogen there, another 60 degrees, and I have methyl here, hydrogen here, and hydrogen here. Okay, now, um, these are the interactions that cause um, instability in our um, conformations. Let me draw these colors, or erase these colors rather, sorry, to be able to make my point. Whenever you have two non-hydrogen substituents 60 degrees apart, this is going to lead to some amount of instability. So there is one there. Notice like this we don't count because it's one hydrogen and one something else. That is as stable as you can be. So like that is not something to concern over. That could be our like point of reference. There is no way you can like get rid of that kind of interaction. Um, then anything, any two things, hydrogen, hydrogen, methyl, hydrogen, any two things that are eclipsed with one, with, with one another um, lead to an increase in energy level. So there's those three there. And then we have um, an eclipse interaction there. Let's see, in our 180 degrees, I'm sorry, in our 120, we, we do have a Gaussian interaction, I meant to say that. We do have a methyl-methyl Gaussian uh, eclipse interaction here, which is worse than a methyl-hydrogen. We have a methyl-hydrogen and we have a hydrogen-hydrogen. Um, generally speaking, like the bigger the groups are, the more serious interactions is going to be. And then we have two methyl hydrogens here. So that and this, Gaussian interactions. And then finally, oh, and I forgot to label these. So this is going to be 240. This is going to be 300. I'm going to have a methyl methyl eclipse interaction hydrogen hydrogen and methyl hydrogen and now after listing the interactions what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go ahead and assign energy values to these like rank them based on their energy but just to keep track of things i'm going to write down um, the interactions that exist in each one of these so in zero degrees i have a methyl methyl gaussian interaction i don't have anything else and then in my other staggered one, in 120 degrees, I have a methyl methyl Gaussian interaction. And then in my 240, I have a methyl methyl Gauche and another methyl methyl Gauche. And I know that all my staggered conformations are going to be more stable than the eclipse conformation. So if I were to give um, relative um, stability rankings to these, I'd uh, go ahead and assign this and this is one and this is two all right now our eclipsed um, conformations are obviously going to be more unstable than the staggered conformations because the groups are like eclipsing so the interactions that I have in my 60 degrees is methyl hydrogen methyl hydrogen methyl hydrogen all right that is not all too bad in my 180 degrees I have a methyl hydrogen I have a hydrogen hydrogen and I have a methyl 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 is pretty bad so already I know that my 180 degrees is going to be um, more than my 60 degrees let's look at 300 degrees 300 degrees has a hydrogen hydrogen has a methyl hydrogen and has a methyl methyl so that's just like my 180 degrees so my um, 180 degrees and 300 degrees are going to be the same and higher than my 60 degrees so this is going to be at the third level and these two are going to be at the fourth um, level in terms of like relative energy so if I go ahead and draw an energy versus dihedral angle diagram. I'm gonna mark energy dihedral angle 180, 240, 
300 and 360. Okay, so we said that our most stable is going to be 0 and 120, and 0 is the same as 360, so I'm going to draw that here. Just going to arbitrarily draw a line. And then we said that our second most stable is going to be 240, so I'm going to draw a line slightly above that, right there. And then we said that our third most stable was going to be our first eclipse interaction, which is a 60. So eclipse interaction or eclipse confirmations are always more unstable than the staggered one. So I'm going to draw that at a higher energy level. And then we said that 180 and 300 are at the same energy level. And then eventually what I'm going to do is that I'm going to connect them with a curve. And here we are. This is our energy versus dihedral angle diagram for the molecule shown above. Well, I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider sharing, subscribing to my channel, and liking this video. That is going to help me a lot. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.